The following podcast contains spoilers for We the Animals. You have been warned. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of KFR News Radio. I am your host, Glenjamin Button, along with your host, Miguel Amagusto. I have run out of languages that I know how to say hi in, so hello. I know, that's why I keep the same tone every time. I'm like, <laughs> there's nothing that's going to change from this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? It's a going, my guy. And I, it's also something I say a lot, too. But it is going, my friend. Would it you is. believe me if I told you I actually watched something? What? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What was it? <laughs> it was an animated movie. Uh, of course it was. And I started an episode of the new season of Altered Carbon. Ooh. Um, the animated movie was, a, uh, was one called My Hero Academia, Heroes Rising. Mm. which actually was really good the ending was solid it had a lot of little fan service at the end but uh kind of predictable with how the ending was gonna go but other than that it was a good solid movie and the first episode of altered carbon uh not gonna lie didn't really pique my interest terribly like the first one did is that an anime series no, altered carbon is that netflix series with uh what's his face um not typing right now i'm not typing at all nope not doing it <clears throat> his, his name i always forget every single time <laughs> um, no. like, i feel like now that you said it's not an anime that i might have seen it joel kinnaman oh yeah definitely haven't seen that um it was uh i think i remember telling you about it like a it's like a sci-fi sci-fi series. Uh, takes place in the future, obviously. Yeah, so, yeah. Sort of like a Blade Runner type thing, where people like uh, wear like skins, like bo- different bodies, but they have. Yeah. It's not like their original skin. Whatever. Uh, I'll let you figure that I'm, out. I'm not a big fan of series in general. Not not. Yeah, we that also like, had this conversation as well. <laughs> yeah, they're they're um, not bad, but they're just. The the first season was solid. Consuming. I really I really enjoyed it, and. Uh, Anthony Mackie is replacing uh, Joel Kinnaman in the season, and uh, not that he's not great. I just the first episode didn't really bring me in. Yeah, they they might be like setting shit up again or something. Yeah. Uh, well, I saw other than We the Animals, I saw two movies. Uh, this was a subpar but entertaining week of film for me. Ooh. Um I don't know if I want to say entertaining because that makes it sound like well, I you did really say subpar first, so I think it's okay. Yeah. Subpar entertainment. Uh, the first one, Sonic the Hedgehog. I was about uh, to say it sounds like you saw Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, and you are correct. It is extremely okay. I'm so good um, at reviewing movies. Unlike everybody else, I did not care for Jim Carrey in this. I thought he was obnoxious and annoying. Yeah. I granted, I think I just may have outgrown Jim Carrey. Um, well, I think that. As well, <laughs> yeah. But like, um, he also kind of just not not that he went off the cuckoo clock, but uh, he's he's kind of a different form of entertainment now than what he used to be as well. Yeah, I I, I enjoy his more serious stuff now than yeah. than his uh, slapstick. Mm-hmm. Um, and in the first scene that he's in, it really feels like he's doing an impression of Will Forte in every Tim and Eric skit sketch sketch that Will Forte has been in. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he kind of goes off of that, but like, that's all I could see for the first couple scenes was just him being Will Forte. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I didn't care for Jim Carrey in it. It was, it had enough jokes to keep me entertaining or yeah. entertained, but, uh, yeah, I was pretty much, m- pretty much on my phone the entire time. I was the only one in the theater. So I was just like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> uh, and then that's I fun. saw face off. <laughs> <laughs> The Nicolas Cage, John Travolta classic, I, question mark? I want to... Cult classic. Uh, I want to take his face off. <laughs> My favorite's like, excuse me, I got a little... Use the little boy's wee-wee room. <laughs> yeah, that movie it, is uh, quite an experience. It's <laughs> terrible. In, in mm-hmm. an entertaining way, but it yeah. is terrible. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, but the thing that bother, bothered me most about it is that uh, John Woo does not trust his audience at all like 
he just wouldn't let people come to their own conclusions. Like there's this one scene um, where John Travolta as the bad guy is confronting Nick Cage, who is now the good guy. And he goes, isn't that religious? And then he puts his arms out and puts his head down like he's Jesus. Oh, yeah. And what do they cut to but a crucifix? Yeah. As if we didn't know that's what he meant by spreading his arms and saying, isn't it religious? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't think I've seen that movie since the latest, yeah. probably 2005. But yeah, it's, it's it's a fun movie. But th- like everything that pissed me off about it was definitely the director's fault. I was just mm-hmm. like, why why are you doing this? And I I... I loved and hated it at the same time yeah it, it feels it feels like such a parody movie it, it's, yeah it's, it's a parody so of funny. itself really yeah <laughs> uh but yeah that's all i saw other than we the animals but let's get into some movie news uh, okay. uh i saw that um an article today that's actually pretty interesting and uh not exactly sure how people are going to react to this because because disney bought fox that means they now own the simpsons mm-hmm and because they own The Simpsons, they're going to have a Simpsons short animated film before Pixar's next movie, Onward. Yeah. Uh, which, I mean, it, it's fine. I have no problem with it. Logistic. I'm just more curious how people are going to react because The Simpsons is not a family cartoon. No, it's not. Uh, it's a cartoon about a family, but it is not a family cartoon. It's mainly for um, adults, for it's the a, most it's, part. It's adult humor in a yeah, cartoon. Yeah, like... like <laughs> Older teenagers and, and adults. Yeah. Um, so I'm interested to see how that will be. Apparently, it's a, it follows Maggie Simpson, so that kind of helps them out a bit, where they're just going to follow someone who doesn't speak. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I thought that was pretty interesting. It also makes me sad, because I'm tired of Disney buying up everything. Uh, I'm actually curious what you think Onward is going to be like. Because <sighs> I, personally, have zero interest in seeing that movie. Same here. I feel like... Pixar's best years are behind them. Yeah, uh, I, I hope mean, I'm Coco, wrong. even though I fell asleep during the first showing, was a fantastic movie. Yes, but yes, I have no like. I didn't even know it was Pixar for so long. I thought it was just one of those DreamWorks movies or something like that, I was like, oh. or, or like Disney animated yeah. studios or whatever. Yeah, I, I really think that Disney has kind of handcuffed them by forcing them to do two sequels for every mm-hmm. um, original film they do. Yeah, which is a terrible formula, if I'm honest. Like it's it's Disney, it's Pixar. They're always going to make money. You don't need to have sequels for animated films. Like family movies will always do gangbusters because everything else is rated PG-13 or R. Yeah, like there is no in between. It's it's always one family movie, family movie in a sea of not family movies. So the fact that they don't trust. Pixar to make a film that will bring in people, yeah, is ridiculous and and I I think it's stupid. But uh, yeah, we'll see. Um, yeah, I really have no interest for it either. I uh, I wish they were kind of sticking with like kids and other cultures. I feel like that's kind of where they strive. Yeah. Um, with like Coco and uh, uh, Coco was so good. I mean. Uh, up in a way, I, I I don't know. I'm not a big fan of like Pixar's fantasy movies. Like The Good Dinosaur was. I was gonna terrible. say that I, I didn't watch it, but I can only it just didn't look good. It was beautifully animated. Yeah, but you expect that from Pixar. Mm-hmm. But the story was terrible. It was so stupid. I didn't like it. I that was the one Pixar movie where I just I wanted to walk out, but. You know, it was in the middle of a mar- movie marathon, so if I walked out, it was going to mean two hours of just waiting for the next movie. Pretty much. Um, but yeah, uh, th- I'm I'm interested to see how this short goes. I will see Onward eventually. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not going to rush to see it. Um, I'm kind of over Chris Pratt and Tom Holland. I, well, speaking of um, Tom Holland, <laughs> on to the next article. There we go. <laughs> um. So Tom Holland seems to be the poster boy of what young actors, uh, just being the young actor here, like he's going to be the next big thing, really. Yeah. Um, And I'm looking at an article here. Uh, I'll be honest, I didn't really read most of these articles, just kind of skimmed them and looked at the headline. Uh, Tom Holland confirms Back to the Future remake talks have happened. 
So paparazzi there's, there's and, that. And, and and film journalists must love him because he just yeah. never keeps his like that shit would never fly like like not does he even not marty s- mcfly no yeah, it would does, not <laughs> does he not sign ndas <laughs> um, we're or anything? done this podcast now <laughs> yeah but like he he can't no, keep his he mouth does shut not shut things. his mouth in the um, slightest yeah which um, i mean it's 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 kind of funny like i don't really yeah. mind but i'm honestly surprised people keep trying to work with him with how much he, he <laughs> for real like runs his mouth uh, um, and i'm not saying that like what he's saying is bad but like in the film industry things fall apart so suddenly mm-hmm that pretty much until they are filming, they can't say that they're filming. Yeah. Um, and so then you like, got it, Tommy Boy over here. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it'd be one thing for the studio to come out and be like, hey, this is what we're trying to do. Yeah. It, it's greenlit, but, you know, things might fall apart. And Tom Holland is coming out and making these, like, blind promises. And I'm sure thing it will come to fruition because, <laughs> you know, it's the 2000s. 20s 2000 yeah. teens all they do is remake so i wouldn't be surprised if they make a back to the future remake well um, for for me it was inevitable inevitable that they were going to do this yeah um, i'd rather goonies remake honestly well even even if even if it's just kind of a clickbait article like and it's not even happening yeah um I, it's bound to happen and i honestly i'm i wouldn't be upset if tom holland was like the marty mcfly yeah but also i'd probably honestly don't or wouldn't care to see it to be honest who'd you want to be doc brown uh, that's tough uh see the problem is christopher lloyd is did so well at that yeah. and same with same with michael j fox like you, know, you don't really see them being you know changed mm-hmm. or replaced uh but i mean i like tom holland i just have no idea who christopher lloyd's character would be who, who would you um I would. I would I'm say. I'm not saying he'd I be a good fit. I would say Jim Carrey, but at this point, his. I'm. I'm just. I'm over Jim Carrey yeah. so hard right now. <laughs> yeah. And, and but I, I feel like he would overdo it. Yeah. So and hard. I'm not saying. I'm not saying I'm over Jim Carrey because like you know cancel culture or anything. I just he doesn't excite me to see a movie like he yeah. used to. Um, I don't think he would be a good fit, but I'd in, be interested to see what Tom Hanks did with it. Um, Interesting. Yeah. Again, don't think he'd be a good fit. I think he'd I was gonna be say I, I don't like. Too I'm silly, not gonna say but, I like don't like Tom Hanks anymore, but, I, but he's, like, he's he's one of those actors where like when I see him in a movie, I'm like, okay, yeah. I know what's going to happen. Now here. imagine imagine a performance. No, Michael Keaton. Okay. How funny would that be? <laughs> that would be pretty funny. But imagine Tom Hanks, his performance in Castaway when he's on the island as Doc yeah. Brown. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah. Um. But Michael I Keaton think we'd would actually have to sit. Down. I would love to just like have a podcast where we just like do movie pitch like castings. Oh yeah, maybe we, we could do an episode at some point. But uh, I would, yeah. yeah, I would love uh, to do that. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm indifferent to that whole thing. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I, I was trying to skim through the, most of these pretty fast. That was just one article. Um, the next one I'll make quick. They don't plan on having a Star Wars movie scheduled until 2022, which not surprised. Um, they got all the shows coming out, so they're they're good on that, um, on that for a little bit, mm-hmm. and hopefully it'll give them time to actually sit down and just fucking write a good Star Wars movie. Yeah. Um, moving on, uh, Mila Jovovich is going to be in another uh, video game movie. What? <laughs> uh, Monster Hunter. Is it uh, with, directed by her husband? Um, Paul W S Anderson. Yep, Hunter. that's her husband. <laughs> yep. Um, and her, uh, her little, her little side boo here, Tony Ja is going to be in the movie as well. Mm. I don't know yeah, why I, I said that. side boo. I saw but... that, the ridiculously large swords. Yeah. That's, uh, that's Monster which, Hunter for you. <laughs> yeah. Like it makes sense. Those swords make sense in a video game. Yeah. Seeing them with live action actors, it's mm-hmm. just ridiculous. It's, it's and, going to be interesting. Yeah. I mean, so, I'll, I'll probably see it, but I'll, I'll probably see it. It's a great video game. Uh, and <laughs> Just video game movies at this point. Or, yeah. We'll see. Um, and then my last article. Uh, I read the uh, TLDR. Too long. Didn't read it at all. But uh, basically, uh, why Li Shang isn't in Mulan. The new uh, live action Mulan. And just because you had to remind me earlier, 
just so everyone, would you remind everyone who Li Shang is? Li Shang is the love interest, uh, otherwise known as the commanding officer of Mulan. I believe who, he's voiced by. Who sings, Let's get down to business. That's beautiful. Are you Donny Osmond? I wish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, basically, the, I don't know if this is like a clickbait article, but why Li Shang isn't in Mulan? In in, in parentheses, it's par- partially because of me too, mm. which I was like, okay. And then, like, I'm reading through the uh, too long, didn't read here. Yeah. And then, like, they're replacing the commanding officer with, an, like, a new, like, person. Like, an older person. I think Donnie Yen, actually. Yeah. And then, uh, although <laughs> although uh, Li Shang's not going to be in the movie, there will be another love interest in the movie. Well, then that kind of defeats the it purpose. It literally defeats the purpose. <laughs> or, is it, or is it because of a man using his power to get a woman... Yeah. Who he doesn't know is a woman. And it's the oh. the thing here is uh, while Hung Hung Hwai, another new character, will be her equal and eventual love interest. Like what is okay. the point? <laughs> I understand the um the whole power using power to get uh you know but like it doesn't play that way in like how can he use his power to get a woman to fall in love with him mm-hmm. when he doesn't know she's a woman. Yeah, that's the I... whole concept of this goddamn movie is that a woman pretends she's a man to join yeah. the, the army. Uh, uh, it was bad enough that Mushu is gone, but also Li Sh- they could have like just made Li Shang just like you know not a commanding officer. Yeah, but it, they're just it, introducing a whole new character. And it saying would be it's one thing if interest. there was just no love interest at all. I that would too. prefer there was no love interest at all. I, I just want, Can't, let's get down to business. Because when you when you have a movie that is trying to empower women but still has her fall in love with a man at the end, and I'm not saying like they p- empowered women can't fall in love with men, but you, you're, you're, you're pandering at that point. You're just like, yeah. oh. She she's strong, but she's still going to fall in love with this guy because this is still the 1980s, and Just we have to have all women ass. fall in love with men. Yeah, let her kick ass. Let her have platonic relationships. We need more platonic relationships in movies, not just between like for, with a, a woman as a main character. Men need to be able to have women friends and not fall in love with them. I'm tired. Uh, I I am just tired of romance and film in general. Like I am more like that's kind of what ruined as good as it gets. Is they try to make a romance out of it. Yeah, just let make her them kick friends. ass, take names, save China's mother. Uh, I won't go any further than that. Save China and let the man fall in love with her, and she's just like, nah. She's like, bitch. China I... needs protection still. Yeah. I'm the only Dark Knight here. Yeah. But anyway, that's that's anyway, it. yeah. <laughs> it's I, I I got way more heated about that than I thought I would. Yeah, not, not it heated. Was, I'm not angry about it. It's no. just it baffles me that like it wasn't a me too thing at all. Like you no. you saying that no person. I'm not saying it's a man or woman thing. No person can fall in love with someone who is technically their like supervisor or boss or whatever. That can never happen. That's just. Yeah, that's dumb. That's dumb. Just um, change the character's role. That would have been fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anyway, let's get into after eighteen minutes of discussion. We the animals. <laughs> really? Is that how long it's been? <laughs> yeah. Holy crap! You feel that? Body, body, body. I remember your heart inside me, taking like a bomb. Promise me you'll stay nine forever. How? Simple. You're not ten. You're nine plus one. Look at us. When we were brothers. We wanted more. You don't swim. You don't know how to swim either. Go down and swim. See, I'm saying. Man 
journey, Joel and Jonah tear their way through childhood and push against the volatile love of their parents. As Manny and Joel grow into versions of their father and Ma... And Ma dreams of escape, escape, and Ma dreams of escape. Jonah embraces the, an imagined world all on his own. Uh, it is written by Daniel Kitrosser, Kitrosser and Jeremiah Zagar, uh, based on the novel by Justin Torres, directed by Jeremiah Zagar, and starring Evan Rosado, Raul Castillo, Sheila Vond, Isaiah Christian, and Josiah Gabriel. Um, uh, I think... We, we kind of discussed this a little bit. Uh, like, the thing that this movie rocks is the look of the film. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's got, like, that, uh, like, independent shot on film in the 80s vibe. Yeah. Um, that I, I absolutely loved. I thought the colors in this were amazing. Um, the performances were amazing, too. Like, all the kids were great. The parents were great. Mm-hmm. Um, this movie, however took a turn that I did not expect it to take. Um, and not in a bad way. Like I, I, I rather enjoyed it where, uh, you know, just to get into it, the main character, uh, Jonah is a, it's a coming a- of age story about him where he is gay. And I was not expecting that at all from the trailer or anything. No. Um, yeah. You think from the trailer, it'd be like, a. Uh- Kind of like a, I don't, I don't want to say Kings of Summer, but it reminded me a lot of Kings of Summer. Uh, yeah. Just like trying to discover who they are as kids growing into adults, even though they're not really that age yet, but yeah. they're kind of coming into who they are as people. Um, and like, I, it, it had that vibe. And then like, oh, sorry, continue. Oh well, no, it's it's like I I agree. Like it it was like Kings of Summer. Uh, you know, coming of age with um parents who fought all the time but still loved each other mm-hmm. uh even though from the wife's perspective she had no reason to love the husband yeah. but you know it, it it it's believable that they're they're in love even though he is abusive towards her um it it's it's problematic in a way but it doesn't make it look like it's okay yeah um and, and but yeah it's this coming of age story uh and it's it's really kind of beautiful. I, I I can't think of another movie where it's a coming of age story of a child and it's a uh, you know LGBTQ. Film. Yeah, I mean it's more more teenagers than it is um, uh, kids, and these these kids are like probably like not even twelve. Yeah. Um, and like you don't really see movies like at this age usually they're like 16 or 15 or whatever Mm -hmm. but uh this like he's literally learning who he is yeah and he just turned years old like uh more towards the beginning of this movie you're he's kind you can see he's kind of like exploring his sexuality in a weird way yeah uh with his it's it's not like a perverse way either no it's it's very innocent like everyone yeah explores their sexuality Um, it's like i want to make that very clear just because we are talking about children and um, I don't, I don't want people to get the wrong idea of this movie. <laughs> but, it, but yeah, in the beginning, it's kind of, and again, their children, like with his mother, because I guess that's the only more female person that he had around him. Mm-hmm. Well, obviously she's a woman, but that's not how I meant to quote it. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. She was, she was the only means for him to discover if he actually liked women or not. Yeah, it seemed, and. Uh, and then, like then, he later in the movie he finds out that he, he actually kind of likes men more, uh, and then it explores that. I'll I won't go into deeper detail than that, but uh, it, it's it's so it's so powerful just uh, this Jonah character and just like how he was raised and like how his environment was and like how they even treated him once they found out he was thinking these thoughts and stuff like that yeah i I actually want to touch on that a little bit because the thing that i found super powerful is that granted he was hitting his mother at this time Mm -hmm. essentially his family finds out because he steals his brother's backpack uh, and uh in retaliation his brother finds his notebook that has like a bunch of like homoerotic drawings and Mm -hmm. and everything and it was, he, it was basically just his personal journal that he yeah. kind of like hid away from everybody and drew yeah. in. And he comes home and it's all the pages are ripped out and on display while his family just sits there in silence. And the only person to really comfort him, which I found 
refreshingly shocking was his father. Yeah. Like his 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 mom can't look at him, his brothers can't look at him. Uh his his father steps up in a big way. And I, and it's not not to say that it's not without its fault. Yeah. But he like stops him from hitting himself, stops him from biting himself, kisses him on the forehead and everything and just kind of in a way that's trying to keep him from hurting himself embraces yeah. him in a way that I was not expecting from this this character this this father character yeah. uh, just because he is kind of brute and and violent pretty much the entire film like he's um, he's good towards his kids for the most part but he yeah he his the father's life isn't you know going the way he wants it so he's kind of just taking it out on people and yeah objects um yeah, that that scene where the pages when that was happening, like the pages were spread out all over the floor. I'm like, no, they fucking didn't. Yeah, like that's a dick that's, move. That's <laughs> so messed up. Have yeah. like not only the family all sitting around it, just waiting for him to come home and see it, mm-hmm. but just like they're all sitting there, just judging the living shit out of him. Mm-hmm. And then he finally like lashes out and like starts hitting his mom. And then like like you said. Uh, it was and totally it, like, surprising that the yeah. dad would just come up and be like, "Let's stop. It's it's, yeah. it's going to be okay." And Relax. I think the only reason he hits his mom is because he expects that from his dad or his brothers, but yeah. not from her. Mm-hmm. And to see her in the same with the same look of judgment as her, yeah, his she, brothers, have, his his dad never actually looks at him with judgment. It's more just yeah. like, "I see who you are now." I kind like it, it's it seems more remorseful. Yeah, his, his looks and his, his mom was basically his his crutch his pillar yeah um where the father was just uh he's kind of he left him he came back he's, he's kind of in and out in his life yeah but his, the mom was the pillar and the way she judged him for all of what he had done mm. he just lashed out hard yeah and it was honestly like I, like i'm getting chills just rem- remembering that scene like it's such mm-hmm. a powerful scene and it's i i, I kind of feel silly talking about the ending the majority of the time but up until the ending, it's just kind of your your typical boy exploring the world kind yeah. of situation, uh, you know, where where this this guy in his neighborhood shows him pornography and everything, and you know, s- stuff that unfortunately most of us have gone through at some point. <laughs> um, <laughs> but and, he broke a he broke a rule where he he just touches himself. You yeah. never touch yourself while yeah. you're watching some videos with your best bud. <laughs> you sit there and you're silence making it weird, guy, and, and hide, hide your, <laughs> hide the erection, no, damn it. But then, then I was, I was a little, <laughs> the, the the heartbreaking part of it, and we said spoilers, so like if you haven't seen this, we already gave a lo- away a lot, but yeah. stop right now. The heartbreaking part of it is that you get this little teaser where he goes into his bedroom and his brothers invite him to play the game they've been playing on and off like the entire movie yeah between, and then he he snaps this, out of it between this scene and the one with the papers strung across the floor are definitely my two favorite scenes oh yeah and i mean they have they both happen in the last 20 minutes but yeah. like it, it's there there are plenty of films that like are just okay mm-hmm. until the end and then the ending just like is a gut punch yeah and and so you think his brothers are going to accept accept him and then he snaps out of it and you realize that that was just what he was hoping would happen yeah it does and this that, circular shot around the room where like he's looking at his brothers like sleeping and then like one of them wakes up and then the other one wakes up and they kind of like invite him in to like hey man just uh, let's let's be kids again let's yeah uh, body 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 yeah. this the, little yeah, chant the, that they did and like it, it was really heartwarming and then like it keeps circling around the room back to him when he was at the door frame and the the kids are still asleep like he was just imagining it yeah and it really like punches you like oh man yeah and you know it, like it, 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 it really it gives you the... shows you that after things have changed yeah like he's going to continue to be judged yeah and, and it gives you this teaser where, like, in a perfect world, nothing would change if a child came out to his parents or was forced yeah. to come out to his parents and family like like it is in this. And, like, nothing changed. But then it's like, no, f- fuck you. Everything's changed. And unfortunately, this is the reality of, m- like, millions and millions of, of uh, LGBTQ kids, like, yeah. all over the world. And it's it's it was such an unexpected surprise. Like... That that to the point where I I really hope that if you're listening to this you've already seen it because 
it, it's one of those few movies where it's not going to have the same impact if you know how it ends. And I kind of really hope everyone that is listening has seen it. Yeah. <laughs> it uh, is on Netflix it's, if it's you a, haven't. It is a solid movie that you want, like, you recommend people watch before you listen to the review of it. Yeah. Because um, the ending, the ending does hit hard yeah um, like the the rest of the movie it, it's it's good it's well acted it's it's got really like great scenes showing the family I, I, I liked how it i don't know how well budgeted it was but i liked like the low budget seemed to work for this and uh mm-hmm. I, it was just so well done yeah absolutely um but yeah, i got nothing else to say about this this is definitely something that everyone should check out i really hope <laughs> I, I do have one okay it, in the beginning of like the solid first like 30 minutes of the movie sorry i'm gonna rustle around a little bit uh the the solid first 30 minutes of the movie uh it took me out of it for so long that the dad looked like freddie mercury i was gonna say that he definitely (laughs) looks like freddie mercury i was like Um, this is happening (laughs) and i mean it makes sense for the time too i feel like everyone like was trying to look like freddie mercury in that in that time um but I just yeah, thought it was funny. Yeah, it's definitely funny. It's this is a great film. Uh, I really hope that you've already seen it. If you're still listening, if not, you sh- still check it out. I, I still think you'll it'll be a good experience, even though you kind of know everything that's that happens in it. For sure. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't really got anything else to say about it. It's a great film. Same. Doesn't even protect your family. Hey, come hey, what's wrong with I'll you? Okay. I need you to be good and quiet around your mom. It's my birthday tomorrow. Happy birthday, old man. Do you think Pops will ever come back? He always comes back. God, starving. Come ring. Hello? Mommy, how come you didn't answer the phone when I call you? Because you sound so ugly. Hello? Hello? What are we going to do? Tell me what to do. You're supposed to find us. Why did you find us? You got your back. Look at us. Growing up. Who will we be? So, that brings us to Le Judgment, uh, which is not French for the judgment. I don't know what that is. But <laughs> that we have to decide, Glenn. Is this a shelf, boy? Does it go on the shelf to be displayed for all? And or, because it is your movie, you get to judge I, first. I do get to go first. Or will this just fall into obscurity like Who knows? so many else before it? <laughs> uh, I think up until the last 20, 30 minutes, I was going to like say this was a good movie but not put it on the shelf and then that last 20 30 minutes just like wraps everything up beautifully and 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 has a meaning and has a point um and it, it's not like it feels like it takes a long time to get there it's all very natural and flows very well and, and is well paced uh so it's not like it's a slow burn it's, it's just a really solid movie that gets even more important in the last act. Mm-hmm. Uh, so with that, I'm going to say, yes, this does become a shelf boy. All right. My turn. Yeah. Um, so up until we talked about it, I was not going to make it a shelf boy. Um, I had really liked the movie. Uh, the ending is obviously um, solid. Mm-hmm. Um, as we said many, many time. Um, but I didn't think, I didn't think I'd want to make it a shelf boy until we talked about it. And it definitely opened up my, my my thoughts a little bit more on it and yeah. it, it just it just works so well that you kind of have to i mean with the age of the kid and like him trying to come out and all that instead of just like a bit if he was like three years older i probably would be like okay this is just another one of these movies yeah but it it shows that kids these young or this young can have these thoughts and they 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 feel these things and stuff mm-hmm. like that i mean i it's it's a shelf boy if I'm honest, I was on the the fence too. Like I was leaning more towards not making it a shelf boy until we started breaking it down. Mm-hmm. And when we were talking about it, I realized how brilliant it kind of is. Yeah. Uh, so 
Yeah, that just goes to show you, like, you can appreciate a movie a lot more if you talk to your friends about it. Just literally talk to somebody about it. Yes. So, We the Animals becomes a shelf boy. It breaks our drought of not having a shelf boy. It's been so long. In which case, we're going to go into our plugs for this week. Mm -hmm. Uh, My plug is a show that I literally watched the entire first season of last night. Because it has one of my favorite comedians in it. She's a Irish comedian, Ashling B. She wrote and created this series. Uh, it's a- about this woman who has depression and struggles with depression. And it- it- it's like, it opens with her coming out of a rehab after trying to kill herself. And it's just this beautiful note about how people kind of hide their feelings with jokes and everything. And it's it's a great show. It's only six episodes so far. All of it is on Hulu, uh, starring Ashling B, who is hilarious. Mm-hmm. And that is called This Way Up. My opening gag is... Uh, Where'd you get that? Forever 21. Well, that's a bit of irony if I ever heard it. We've loved having you here. Oh, God, you've had the time of my life. Like I said, this is not a spa. It's a rehab facility. Is she fixed? God, you ever just want to feel something for five minutes? You really are cracking boobs. I know. And I laughed in the park and I ran and I ran and I ran and I... You've got a fire in you. And you can use that to burn yourself and everyone else around you down. Right, well, I was just sort of hoping for the lottery numbers, but OK. Take it This way up on Hulu. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, mine is going to be more music than a movie, um, but it is involved with movies. Studio Ghibli uh, suddenly makes 38 albums of anime music available on Spotify, Apple Music, and more. Mm. So Studio Ghibli just dropped the bomb for literally almost 700 tracks to listen from. Oh, God. Um, I've only watched a handful of their movies, so like, I... Uh, like, I probably honestly won't listen to it, but I know there's a lot of huge fans of Studio Ghibli out there Yeah, who will gladly just, like, uh, fall asleep in their dreams to this. And fall you asleep said, in their dreams. You said that's on Spotify? It's pretty much almost on every music platform. Every mu- music platform? Yeah, Spotify, All right. Apple Music, Amazon Music, Google Play. The list keeps growing and growing. So this way up on Hulu and the Studio Ghibli discography, I guess. Pretty much. Uh, available on all major platforms. Um, and I guess it's going to bring us into what our next week's assignment is, Glenn. It, it do. It do what, be like that. What film are the children watching this week? <laughs> well, I don't think the children should be watching this in the slightest. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, I was searching for a little bit. And we haven't... Have we done a sci-fi one in a while? I think... Prospect, which was our first one back. Okay. Um, and, and of course, Star Wars when we had that bonus episode. But yeah, I don't think we've done star uh, sci-fi in a while. Other than Dune, I think. We haven't was... done horror in a while either. Well, congrats. This is action, horror, science fiction. Ooh. All in one bundle. And if you like that, it's also suspenseful. So, Ooh. we're jumping back to the late eight. 1890s. Jeez, what a fuck! What a year for film. The 1890s. The 1980s. Yeah, the, the, the train film. coming into a station. <laughs> that's, that's a little bit of a deep dive for people. It's <laughs> a huge deep dive. For the third time's the charm. 1985 film Leviathan. It was an experiment that tampered with nature's most basic laws. It went terribly wrong. It was buried five miles down. Now, a crew of undersea miners is about to stumble upon this terrifying secret. Shack to seven. What's going on out there, Williams? My God, are you picking this up? Look at that. Leviathan. Currently with the Russian fleet in the Baltic Sea. Currently it's rusted junk and we're looking at it. I say we protect ourselves. Leviathan. Ooh, um, I have been seeing this movie a lot a- around lately. Yeah, and it kind of was just on the front page of uh, Amazon Prime. And I was like, you know what? I've heard of it, but I haven't seen it. And uh, it's... If you think about it, it kind of came after the the wave of Alien, uh, the thing, and just mm-hmm. a bunch of, you know, those type of movies. Maybe even Jaws, if you're you fancy about it. 
Um, all right, so Leviathan, uh, Peter Weller leads an underwater exploration team trapped five miles beneath the ocean surface with a creature that cannot die, dash, dash, existing only to kill. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and where's that on again? Uh, that is going to be on Amazon Prime. Amazon video. Prime. Amazon Prime. That came out on St. Patrick's Day, 1989. Jeez. Fun. I hope there's a bunch of I Irish. Hope there's a leprechaun there. just down there chilling. Like, yeah. Eh. I was gonna go somewhere <laughs> with that joke, but it was gonna be dumb. So here we are. Leviathan is so that next is, week's podcast. That children. That is your assignment for next week. Um, and by children, I mean. Hey, don't watch that, children. It's rated R. <laughs> it's rated R. Uh, uh, available on Amazon Prime, Leviathan. Uh, and that brings us to the end of the podcast. Thank you, everybody, who has listened to this. Mm-hmm. Uh, as always, you can fo- find our stuff on our website, KeystoneFilmReview.com. On Instagram, we are Keystone underscore film underscore review. Twitter, we are Keystone underscore film. Facebook, we are Keystone Film Review. I really wish that we had the same name for all of them, so it would be easier <laughs> to say. On Letterbox, I am Mike KFR. And I am Glenn KFR. And that will do it until next week when we get freaky with Leviathan. I don't know if it's freaky, but it looks kind of freaky. I really don't know what to say about that one. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.